Good Erev Shabbos and welcome to the pre-Shabbos Joshua on Parshas Korach. Yes, we are getting a little tired of these virtual pre-Shabbos Joshua's, but the good news is that soon, God willing, we'll be able to have the Joshua back in Shul through a mask, God willing, and hopefully share him soon. But in the meantime, one quick thought and just enjoying this, the environment of our additional minion. He had a very beautiful extended tent thanks to our ground staff and thanks to Marvin in the office, this incredible expanse where we have our outdoor minyanim. Very much looking forward to seeing everybody back at the right and good time. Just want to take, take a moment to wish a couple mazel tovs. First of all, a special mazel tov to Dr. Fremit and Mari Foreman um, on the special in the birth of their grandson to Yael and Aaron Zelig, Be'ezra Sashem. He should enter Be'ezra, shall Avram Avinu be'etoy of his man at a good and healthy hour. And we should be able to celebrate together. Also, a special mazel tov to Marcia and Evan Litton on the engagement of their daughter Katie Roth to Jonathan. Tat now Be'ezra Sashem. The wedding should be Bishar Tov Mitzlachas. I didn't give up a pre Shabbos er, 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 Joshua last week, so I have another chance to wish a special anniversary mazel tov to Robert and Lillian Price. God willing, many strong years together, bigger zunt, God willing. Quick thought for the parasha as we enter into parasha's Korach is, Korach sounds like, you know, a real social justice seeker. Here's the kind of person you want in your team where he sees something which is not correct, he sees something which is not transparent. There he is, here's the man who's going to take the charge, here's the man who's going to fix what looks crooked, he's going to do the accounting and the auditing to make sure that everything works out. Is, there, is that nepotism? How is it that one side of the family is getting all the privileges? It sounds like the right kind of questions. However, here's the problem with Korach and that is, is that he asks his question at the wrong time. You see, a lot has happened before this moment. Bnei Israel has left Egypt, Bnei Israel have crossed the Yamsuf, they have received the Torah, they have been encamped at this Midbar Sinai, they have done their journeys, there has been Mishlod in them, there has been all kinds of diff different items that have occurred, Cheta Egel, all the way through. And during that entire time, Korach had the opportunity of voicing his concerns about the leadership well before now. Why is it? It's almost as if Korach is the last episode we have before the expanse of 38 years of silence in the middle of the desert. That's the beginning of Pasha's Chukas. Why did he wait for now if he was such a knight in, just, a knight in shining armor, the knight of justice? Rav Ben Sion Fira answers with a remarkable and perfect insight. And that is, is that it was only after the episode of the Miraglim, which occurs just beforehand in Pasha's Shlach, that Korach had the ground upon which to stand. Perhaps a little bit of a bad analogy there. You see, Korach understood that as long as the people had a purpose, as long as the people had a destination, as long as the people knew where they were going, it would be very hard to dislodge them or to perhaps pivot their interests and their emotions in a rebellion. It was only now in Parashas Korach, following the Chet Maraglim, when Bnei Yisrael are told unequivocally, by Midbar Azeh, Yiplu Pigreichem, V'kol Pikudeichem, V'kol Misparachem, Iben Esrim Shona V'mala Asher HaHil Noisem Alai, that all of you are going to die. The whole generation is going to be wiped out, except for a couple of people, Yosha and Kalev. When the people heard that, they lost their sense of purpose. They lost their sense of destination. They lost their will and wish to live. And when there is a void in meaning, opportunists step in. When there is a void in direction, there are those very willing to give people direction or to use them for their own advancement or their own direction. Korach was not a knight of justice. Korach was not a person seeking rectitude and transparency. Korach was a person looking to forward his own goals in life and using the people just at the moment when they lost their purpose. The importance of purpose, the importance of being able to have a sense of purpose, the importance of having a direction in life. Rav Kahneman, the famous Ponovich Rav, was famously asked by a fellow who was a Holocaust survivor. Rav Kahneman himself managed very narrowly to escape Europe to Israel at just before everything um, was destroyed, but he lost his entire family in Europe. 
and uh, the, a, a Holocaust survivor turned to me and he said, I don't understand. We both came out of the inferno of Europe, and yet look what you've built. Rav Kahneman single-handedly built Ponovich, built Bnei Brak. He died in debt with such an amount of dreams that he'd invested in, which he hadn't yet been able to pay back. He was a remarkable human being. He had a vision, which was he was building on the dunes of Bnei Brak when there was nothing there, when the world was burning. And yet he was able to construct all of this. And th this other fellow could never really put his life together again, could never really be able to, to find a, a way forward to be able to remarry, to be able to co reconstitute a life which has been so broken, and understandably so. And he said, why is it that you were so successful? I, I couldn't get there. And the, Ralph Kahneman answered him and he said very simply, he said, we asked different questions. When you came out of that, you said, why me? Ribbon Shalom, why me? Why did you put me through this? A very understandable question. The question I asked was, for what purpose was I chosen? What, for what reason did you choose that I survived? Not why was it that I suffered, but for what reason was I chosen? Having a sense of purpose in life is a very important point. And what we learn from the sixth parish is that when we don't, when we drift, when, when life is, so to speak, you know, in, in flux, then there are opportunists who will take advantage of us and realign us with their purposes. That's why perhaps one of the single most important ideas, as the Mesir HaShem says, is that a person needs to know what is their purpose in the world. It doesn't say to know your neighbor's purpose. It doesn't mean to say to know the leader's purpose or the politician's purpose. It's to know your purpose. In your specific constellation in life, what is it that you bring to the table which no one else has the capacity to? What is it that you are uniquely situated, whether it be in family, socially, economically, to be able to change, to be able to leverage, and to be able to affect and impact the world? This is a parasha which calls people to purpose. May we always wake up in the morning knowing specifically that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Moide Ani, I know that there's something in life that you want me to achieve today. Let's find that. Let's make that happen. Have a wonderful and meaningful Shabbos.